This is an excerpt from a recent Power Up webinar on color correction and grading in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to display, adjust, and analyze images using the video scopes. So let me show you how to display the video scopes, how to rearrange the video scopes, how to change video scope settings, how to use them to evaluate images, and how to switch a library and a project between SDR and HDR. It's really nice to look at scopes working with some very, very simple images. We'll work with a grayscale gradient and a soft blue circle. I don't need the browser. A nice way to make that disappear is Control Command 1 toggles the browser on and off Control Command 1 and we'll display the scopes with Command 7. And by default it shows two scopes. This is the vector scope here and this is the waveform monitor here. The waveform monitor tells us everything we need to know about the grayscale values in an image. We can say, ah, look, the left side of the image is brighter than the middle of the image, and the middle of the image is brighter than the right side of the image. I can say that uh, it smoothly shades from light to dark, but I can't, by looking at the waveform monitor, tell you if it's blue or green or red or white. I can't tell anything about color in the waveform. Nor can I say that it's bright at the top and dark at the bottom. I can't make top to bottom statements because the height determines its brightness. I can only make left to right statements. As I look at the image, I can clearly see that it shades from light to medium to dark. But I, that bar could be at the top or the middle or the bottom or fill the frame. The waveform monitor wouldn't really tell me anything about that. If I look at the vector scope, the vector scope tells me everything I need to know about color, but nothing about black and white. And the reason is, color is actually in three dimensions, and the easiest way to envision it is a grapefruit. If I take a knitting needle and I put it in the north pole of the grapefruit and push that knitting needle through the grapefruit until it comes out the south pole, the knitting needle represents every shade of black, white, and gray, with white at the north pole, black at the south pole. If I cut the grapefruit in the middle at the equator and look at it, that's what I'm seeing here. This is a horizontal slice of the grapefruit, and as I look, the colors depend upon the angle inside the grapefruit, red near the top, then magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. The targets, that's those square boxes here, represent the maximum value of any color. It's like this is a pure red and you don't want it to be any brighter than that. If you were to draw an imaginary line connecting each of these targets, that indicates the maximum saturation at 50% gray that you could have for any color. As we get closer to white or closer to black, get closer to one of the poles of the grapefruit, notice the grapefruit isn't as wide. It's widest at the equator and narrows to a single dot at the top or the bottom. I have less saturation the closer I get to white and less saturation the closer I get to black and the greatest saturation at the equator. So when we're making color adjustments we want to do that generally in the mid-tones. When we're making grayscale adjustments that doesn't affect color at all and we can do that in the highlights or the mids or the shadows. Notice that we're looking at every possible shade of gray from pure white to pure black. We've covered the entire range here. But if you look really closely, all those shades of gray are a single dot at the very center of the vector scope. Why? Because grayscale values are perpendicular to color. So every shade of gray is a single dot in the center of the vector scope. This is why the vector scope makes it really easy to see if you have a color cast, because if it's supposed to be gray and it isn't, that dot isn't in the center. It's wandering somewhere differently. For instance here, let's take a look at this blue soft circle. Look at what the vector scope is showing. It's saying we've got stuff which is pure black, that's the part in the center, desaturated, but our saturation increases the farther out we get from the center, and it's heading toward the color blue. It's about 50% saturated. As I look at the waveform monitor, I don't have anything which is at the 100% white. There's nothing very bright here. At best, it gets to be about 33%. I say the left edge is dark, the right edge is dark, the center is bright, 
But whether this is a circle or a square or a rectangle or a trapezoid, I can't make a content decision. But I can say the center is brighter than the edges, and the vector scope allows me to say it's blue. There's no magenta, there's no red, there's no yellow or green or cyan. Or take a look here. Notice that I've got a fairly sharp edge delineating between black and the blue color. I can also say there's something dark in the center of that, but I can't tell you why it's dark or what the shape is or whether it's a circle or a square. Again, I can't make content decisions, but I can say the edges are dark and the image itself is about 88, 87% bright at its most bright part. And the color is halfway between blue and cyan and about 50% saturated. So I could say there's no red, but I can't say it's a circle. Don't fall into the trap of trying to make content decisions looking at the scopes. The scopes tell you analytical things, but they don't tell you content things. See where it says view. This allows me to say I just want to see one scope. And this allows me to say I want that to be a vector scope, or I want it to be a histogram. That's what a histogram looks like, except I'm asking it to do a split here. Let's just turn this to Luma. OK, this is exactly like the histogram in Photoshop. Black on the left, white on the right. It shows the distribution of pixels from black to white, where pure white is at 100%. We can look at it in terms of color. So I can say, there I've got a spike of red, there I've got a spike of green or blue. I could even stack them. So I could say, show me a parade, which is just the red channel, just the green channel, and just the blue channel. This is useful. Sometimes there are technical reasons. Well, I want to look at the individual color channels, but most of the time it's more detail than I need and it's too hard to interpret. So for me, I tend not to use the histogram. Instead, whoops, wrong button, this one right here. I go back to the waveform, and this allows me to see what my luma values are. That means grayscale. I run the waveform in the luma mode. But I can also look at RGB parade. These are three separate waveforms that shows me the amount of red, the amount of green, and the amount of blue. I've got about 96% blue, I've got about 89% green, about 78% red, and it's useful to see these different color channels. But most of the time, I run the waveform in Luma. I can see two side-by-side -side scopes, or I could see a group of four with the waveform, the vector scope, the histogram, and the RGB parade. I can even take these four and change the view to be vertical. This puts the four scopes underneath the viewer. Now here, this is not particularly helpful to me because the scopes are too squished. But if I'm running two monitors and I put the viewer over to the second monitor, putting the scopes underneath it makes the scopes much more readable. So this is what it would look like on the second monitor. I could take the viewer and now I've got the four scopes underneath. But again, I almost never use the RGB overlay and almost never use the RGB parade unless I'm looking at one very specific issue. So instead, what I would do is I would set this to be two scopes and not make it vertical. So on my second monitor, I'm looking at something that looks like this. So I can get a good sense of the picture and a good sense of the scopes. But this only exists when you have two monitors connected to your computer. And for today, we're just going to have one. So we've seen that we've got a variety of different ways that we can customize the layout of our scopes. We can make them either horizontal or vertical, and we can turn off the color display so we just look at a, a monochrome display. But for what I'm doing today, we're going to stay with the two side by side and the default settings underneath. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on color correction and grading in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 261. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours 
on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.